This video is brought to you by Squarespace. How many Beatles records do you have? How many Beatles records do you need? Those are two questions I've been asking myself for a while, and maybe they're ones you've asked yourself too. I'm Andrew from Parlogram, and after 40 years of collecting Beatles records, I'm asking myself the question, am I done? This was the first Beatles record I bought with my own money, just after my 10th birthday, in fact. And since then, I've bought and sold literally hundreds of Beatles records, which have included some of the rarest and most sought after in the world. But recently, I've been buying less and less, which has got me wondering if now is the time to stop. I have all their albums in both mono and stereo. I've also got mono and stereo box sets, both vintage and new singles collections, US albums, as well as other random pressings from other countries around the world. So do I really need any more? Although I began collecting Beatles records at an early age, it really only got serious when I joined eBay way back in 2003. My initial goal back then was to create a specimen collection of the best first mono and stereo pressings of each of their UK albums. Now back then, most of the original Beatles records which were being offered for sale were from their original owners. And as eBay was then almost exclusively an auction-based platform, it was an affordable and achievable goal. And as time went on and I kept upgrading, I began accumulating spare copies which I then resold on eBay, sometimes for a profit. The following 10-year period, I think, was another golden age of record collecting, where after years of crate digging and scouring the small ads, the internet made it possible to find anything and everything. But the downside of all that, of course, was that nothing was rare anymore, just expensive. I soon began buying and selling not just my own vinyl, but other people's too, and during that time handled virtually every collectible Beatles record there was. It was a seller's market, as demand for good quality original Beatles vinyl was ahead of supply, and the market even rode out the global financial crisis in 2008. Brexit changed the landscape for me as far as buying records from the UK was concerned. Although Brexit has seen a dip in trade between Europe and the UK, it doesn't seem to have harmed UK dealers themselves. Talking to a few of them, it seems that although they are understandably selling less to European countries, Business within the UK has increased, which has, to some extent, made up for their drop in European sales. But when one door closes, another one opens, and there was no shortage of Beatles vinyl to be found in other European countries. But do I really need any more? After all, how many copies of Sgt Pepper does anyone need? Well, that's a tough one. As like all collectors will tell you, it's not just ownership, but the thrill of the hunt, which is the difficult habit to break. Now, back in my early teenage years, when I began collecting, I loved nothing more than going out record hunting, in a charity or junk shop, or at a jumble sale or garage sale. And the feeling of finding a good Beatles record out in the wild was, and still is, a powerful one. Now, that was a long time ago, and a lot of things have changed. But is it still possible to find Beatles records in the wild? And if so, are they for me worth buying? So to find out, a few weeks ago on a sunny Saturday morning, I got up and out from behind my desk and went downtown, vinyl hunting. Now, as you may or may not know, although I was born in England, I have for the past 20 years lived in Austria. And although the Beatles never played a proper concert in Austria, they did film the snow scenes for help in Obertown, just outside Salzburg, a video about which you can see elsewhere on the channel. Now, I think you will agree, this is a fine setting for a flea market. This market runs all the way down the main square, or Hauptplatz, and on busy Saturdays, sets up on both sides of the street, which runs through it. The trouble is that it's now 9am, and this place has been open since 5, so I'm worried that there might not be anything of interest left. But let's have a look around anyway. 
The market is a highly eclectic mix of antiques, collectibles and household junk. And as records fall into all of those categories, the chances of me finding some are relatively high. But can I find anything by the Beatles? A. That I haven't got or B. That I actually want. Looks like someone here is clearing out their 80s collection. Here's Paul's No More Lonely Nights. German pressing, of course. This looks like a box of random 80s singles and I really don't need another copy of Movie Medley, thank you very much. Nothing in the LP box either. Although this copy of Blue Monday is tempting, but unfortunately, it's been played to death. Here's an Elvis in Nashville CD set for 20 euros, but it's not that much more expensive new, and it's not the Beatles, so I'm gonna put it back. Now this looks like some interesting stuff and it's only four euros. But the condition isn't that great. Now this is much better. Now I will say at this point that these albums were priced higher than four euros, but were still very reasonable. Lots of original German and US pressings. Some I knew, some I didn't. But as I didn't have to pay shipping on any of them, I could afford to take a few chances. I have that XTC album already. Now I love 60s soundtracks, and this was one I've been after for ages. 
1966 soundtrack to The Deadly Affair, sung by the late great Astrid Gilberto. Now, I ended up spending around 250 euros at this stall. The vendor explained that it was the first time he'd been here in four years, and that he usually sells in Vienna. He had so many great records, from indie, jazz, funk, soul, but the one thing he didn't have was any Beatles. But there must be one Beatles record on this market today. And what about this stall? Ah, there was the Hamburg tapes, but got that. And of course, 1962 to 66, a regular German pressing. But I've got that too. Quite a few Stones albums, but mostly new pressings. Right, that looks like the flea market done. A great week for vinyl, except if you're looking for the Beatles. If you're thinking of selling vinyl, or indeed any other kind of music online, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform which has all you need to create a great-looking and successful online store or e-commerce website. Their award-winning, easy-to-customize templates in conjunction with their next generation Fluid Engine website design system, are crafted to help you create an expressive and stylish online store. You can connect and engage with your customers via Squarespace's email campaigns. These allow you to introduce your brand, announce new arrivals and sales, or even send discount codes to your top customers. Squarespace can also help you grow your brand with custom merch, where you can choose from a selection of products which you can customize with your own designs and set your own prices. Production, inventory, and shipping are all handled for you, saving you both time and effort. Interested? Well, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash parlogram to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. My next stop was Media Markt, your general all-purpose consumer electronic chain store, which carries everything from cameras, Apple gear, computers, TVs, phones, etc. But more importantly, vinyl and CDs. So let's see what they have on offer by the Beatles. Well, straight away, there's the Revolver vinyl box set. Priced at €182.99. The CD box here is €113.99. Let's see if there's any other Beatles vinyl in the B section. That's a no. Some of the new ones include Paul Simon at $27.99 and Bruce Springsteen at
There's definitely more stones in here than beetles. Also some Pink Floyd. And of course, some Elvis. So plenty for your average rock pop fan, but slim pickings for anyone looking for Beatles vinyl. Maybe we'll have more luck in the CD section. Or perhaps not. Maybe we'll have more luck at the collector's shop in town. They must have some Beatles in there. Okay, this looks like the place. Let's check out their Beatles section. A Japanese pressing of real music is something I definitely don't need. Disappointingly, there's nothing here for me at all. Well, as you can see, I ended up coming back with a bunch of LPs, but none of them were by the Beatles. But of course, most used vinyl today is bought online via eBay or Discogs, which is always a gamble. Of course, there are some great sellers out there, but looking at the 60,000 plus Beatles records available on eBay, it seems that supply has now exceeded demand. So remember folks, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. So if I was going to have a purge of my Beatles collection, what would I hang on to? Well, at the top of my keep list would be something I've been banging on about in loads of videos on this channel, which is this, the Beatles collection, or BC13 if you like. First released in 1978, it contains all the Beatles UK studio albums, from Please Please Me to Let It Be plus a bonus rarities album. Every copy ever produced of this set is 100% analog, and it was only deleted when the CDs came out in 1987, and replaced for a short time by this black wooden set, which was basically the CD masters on vinyl. It was produced in many different countries around the world, and although some sound better than others, all, in my opinion, sound better than not just the wooden box, but the 2012 remasters, both of which were digitally sourced. And before you comment, yes, some digitally cut vinyl can sound great, but just not the Beatles. The UK boxes are for me the gold standard, but as I said, all of these boxes are 100% analog stereo, so you can't really go wrong with any of them. Even if you pay 300 euros or dollars for one, that's still just over 23 per album, which is still less than the 29.99 or 33.99 the Beatles store are charging you for a new digitally sourced pressing. Now I know I said that buying used vinyl is generally a real gamble, but in my experience, I found the original owners of these boxes didn't play them very much, and the chances of finding one in good shape are very high. Next on my list to keep is the 2014 Mono box set. Like it or not, Mono was a big part of the Beatles sound, but finding this Mono vinyl box set is more of a challenge. Well, for your wallet anyway. And maybe collecting less than mint original copies may be a better way to go. 
Other original albums which I would keep, which are not in the box set, would be the UK first pressings of the Red and the Blue albums, the German Magical Mystery Tour, and, until they make a new one, an EP set, of which I think the CD is the best and cheapest option. When it comes to singles, the 2019 singles box set is hard to beat. Its contents sound as good as, if not better, than the UK originals. Of course, all the official Apple albums from Live at the BBC onwards are essential, and I look forward to buying the next deluxe box set the day it's released. Now, in the same way that not every music lover loves vinyl, I know that every Beatles fan isn't a collector. And compared to someone like my friend Francis, whose amazing Beatles collection we visited last year on the channel, I'm certainly not in that league. But whatever type of collection you do have, you will most likely at some point in the future need to prune it down. I don't need multiple copies of every album. What I do need is space, not just for other records old and new, but maybe for some new gear. Because sometimes spending money upgrading your equipment can breathe new life into your collection, just as this Stratos cartridge from Pure Fidelity has done for me. But what about you? Have you stopped, purged, pruned, or are you just starting? Do let me and everyone else know what you think about all this in the comments. I really hope you enjoyed this departure from our usual content, and thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring the channel over the past couple of months. I know some of you don't like all the ads, but the reality is that they do help to keep the channel going, which don't forget is free to watch. I'll be back next week with something completely different, but I'll say bye for now and thanks for watching. Thank you.